Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and stumbled upon this place, my name is Katie and this is Ralph's Rising. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are gonna bake a delicious sourdough chocolate cake. It's gonna be topped with a homemade buttercream icing as well as some crumbled up Dutch chocolate or Dutch cocoa wafers. It's gonna be delicious and fun for my oldest son's birthday. He has requested that I make him a dirt cake. So let's have lots of fun with this. We're gonna be using a little bit of food dye, moderation is key, as well as some store-bought gummies to decorate this cake because you've gotta have some gummy worms. I've also got a fun surprise for Riker. He didn't ask for it, but I thought of something a little bit fun and creative for him, and we're gonna include that in this video too. So stay tuned so you can see what it is. But let's get right into it. Here's your homemade sourdough Dutch chocolate birthday cake. Happy birthday, Riker. We're gonna start this out with a sourdough sponge that I made last night. I just used some starter and some flour and water so that I could get one cup of sourdough starter. I'm gonna add one cup of milk to this and I'm gonna give it a good stir. And you're gonna notice when you are using your sourdough starters like this, they're gonna be pretty goopy and gooey and you're gonna have to mix for a few minutes to get them well incorporated. We are gonna add one cup of flour to this and mix it in. And then we're gonna add one more cup of flour to this. It's already gonna be really thick. And then it's gonna become more of a dough when we add the second cup of flour. Don't be alarmed. As it ferments, it is gonna loosen up. Um, so it's gonna ferment and it's all gonna mix in beautifully to make the cake batter. And while this sits on the counter for the next few hours, because it does need to ferment, we are gonna cover it with a lid and just let it rest here for about two to three hours. And then I'm gonna be starting my shortbread or it's not so much a shortbread it is a cocoa wafer recipe these homemade chocolate wafer cookies are easy to make and so much more flavorful than the packaged variety they're crispy with just a bit of chew full of cocoa flavor and have just enough sugar not too sweet it can be hard to source store-bought cookie wafers in chocolate flavor these are great on their own and are versatile enough to go in any baking project. I'm gonna start out here with 11 tablespoons of unsalted butter and I'm gonna add to that 2 thirds cup of granulated sugar and I'm gonna cream this up. If you're using a stand mixer, you're gonna find that you may have to scrape the sides down periodically in between additions and throughout your mixing process. Make sure you're scraping down those sides so that all the ingredients are mixing up evenly. So here we're going to add to a separate bowl one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Then we're going to add a half a cup of this Dutch processed cocoa powder. You want to make sure that it's sifted. Mine is actually pretty fine already so I'm not going to need to sift this. And then you want to add half a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Here I am using the Redmond's Real Salt. I love using that in all of my baking, cooking, and seasoning applications, as well as some health applications. Once this is all mixed up, I just use the whisk from my mixer. We are gonna be adding some vanilla extract, one teaspoon to be exact. I actually just eyeball it and squirt in a little extra, and then I'm adding one large egg yolk. We are gonna incorporate this with our sugar and butter and make sure it's all nice and creamy in there before we start adding in our flour mixture. You're gonna notice when you start adding your flour mixture to this that it's gonna be fairly dry, but we wanna be sure that we are continuously scraping down the sides and getting everything incorporated well into this mixture. So so just this is sped up in a time lapse there is no way that I am adding this flour into this at this speed I would have a huge cloud of dust in my kitchen it would cover everything so this is time lapse just to kind of show you the process and how this incorporates it is it seems like a dry mixture but once I turn this off if I am able to squeeze it together and make a ball of it then it is well incorporated enough and I may or may not use all of that flour mixture I'm pretty sure that I used all of it but 
If it were too dry, I might just pop in a little squirt of vanilla in there to try to moisten it up a little bit further, or maybe another teaspoon of butter. But we are gonna wrap this up. I have squeezed it together really firmly. I'm gonna wrap this up and then pound it on the counter a few times just to try to get it all to stick together really well before I stick it in the refrigerator because I wanna be sure that this rolls out well. And you're gonna notice when I roll it out and re-refrigerate it before slicing that it is all held together really well. So at first when I roll it out, the sides are breaking, but I keep compressing my dough back to the center. So I'm gonna roll it out a little bit and then I'm gonna push the sides in and, uh, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna show that in this video, but there I go, I'm like pushing the sides in and compressing the dough back together and rolling it some more. And as I do this, it's just to make sure that the dough is pressed well together because as you can see, it's breaking up a little bit as it's rolled, but you just press and squeeze the sides and keep rolling and pressing and squeezing the sides and keep rolling and it will roll out into a beautiful sheet of cookie. It's just not gonna do it very, you know, it's not gonna roll out smooth like butter. It's gonna roll out a little chunky and you just rebuild it and re press it together. It's gonna be fine, I promise you, because look at how beautiful it comes out. Here is my flat rolled up cookie dough or rolled out cookie dough, my wafer dough. I realized I needed a bigger pan for it. I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator and let it chill for a little while. And then once it's chilled, I can pull it out of the refrigerator. My oven is preheated at 350 degrees and I am using this little, I guess it's like a lasagna or pasta roller. I'm not sure. I got this in a bag of mixed kitchen items from a thrift store or a yard sale, I don't recall, but it works out perfectly to roll these wafers. And I'm just making them kind of like graham cracker wafers and in retrospect, if I were to do this, for uh, making ice cream sandwiches or something. I would poke holes in them to keep them from bubbling up because I did notice that my wafers bubbled a little bit. That's my baby in the background. So to prevent the bubbling, you can just tap them with a little toothpick, poke a couple holes in it, and bake these in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. We'll make a chewy cookie and 12 minutes will make a crispier cookie. Here we are back at the mixer and we are gonna be combining our ingredients to make this sourdough cake batter. To this stand mixer, we are going to be beating together one and a half cups of granulated sugar, one cup of vegetable oil. You can use melted coconut oil or any oil of your choice really. Two teaspoons vanilla extract, one teaspoon of salt. We're also gonna add in one and a half teaspoons baking soda, three quarters cup of natural cocoa powder. You can use the Dutch processed cocoa powder that I used earlier. Optional, you can do a teaspoon of espresso powder. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna jack my kids all up before bedtime eating this cake. We are gonna do two large eggs and I am also gonna be adding in that leftover egg white from the cocoa wafers, the egg white that I did not use in that recipe is gonna go into this cake as well. We are scraping down the sides to make sure that our batter is evenly incorporated. And then we're going to gently combine the chocolate mixture with the starter flour milk mixture. And we are gonna stir this until it is smooth. This will be a gloopy process at first, but the batter will smooth out as you continue to beat it gently in a nine by 13 inch pan. We are going to grease this up and I'm gonna be using some lard from my pigs, from some pig fat that I rendered down into lard. You can use anything that you want. You can use butter, you can use lard or shortening if you like. I just prefer to use this lard that I have on hand. You can use bacon grease even, and I think that that would add a interesting yet lovely flavor to your sourdough chocolate cake. Into this pan, I'm gonna pour this mixture and I'm gonna make sure that it's no more than three quarters of the way full. That way it doesn't spill over into my oven. If there's anything extra, you can pour that into a muffin tin and bake that alongside of your cake, I would just decrease the baking time. So this cake is going to bake in a preheated 350 degree oven. It was still on from the cookies. So we're going to bake this for 30 to 40 minutes. 
until it springs back up when lightly pressed in the center. You can also do a cake tester using a toothpick inserted into the center. When that comes out clean, you know that your cake is cooked all the way through. Okay, so this is the beautiful cake. And I can see where I didn't sift the flour. I can see a couple like little white chunks in there. So hopefully it's not too off-putting. But yes, this is a beautiful sourdough cake. You can make sourdough cake. You can make cake with sourdough. And it's delicious. I've done this quite a few times for birthdays before. Um, typically I put it in a bundt cake or a different shape. This year I'm putting it in this cake because I want to make it like a dirt cake. He requested a, uh, like a dirt cake with bugs and gummy bugs and different things on it. So that's what we're going to do. Here are the chocolate wafers. You can see these would make a perfect ice cream sandwich. Next up, we are going to sift some powdered sugar and get this whatever kind of icing recipe that you want to use i will link down below in this video's description the buttercream icing that i used it's my preference to make this kind because i love buttercream can we not agree that it is most delicious with a whisk attachment i cream up one cup of butter. This is about two sticks of butter. It is room temperature. It's been sitting out on my counter this morning and we are gonna whip that up into a nice creamy consistency. And then we are gonna add three to four cups of confectioner sugar to this. And once that starts to incorporate, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of milk and then two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So same deal, you wanna make sure that you are scraping down your sides so that everything is incorporating really well. And then you want to whip this up until it is nice and fluffy, but you do not wanna break your icing. You don't want it to start to get too hot to where the oil and the butter start to separate. No, 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 you do not want that. So once it's whipped up nicely, that is good enough. You just accept it that it's doubled in its uh, amount and you can move on to actually decorating. So I'm gonna pre-fill these bags with some colored icing and we are gonna get to decorating this wonderful cake. We have a naturally flavored grape and peach jello mold with gummies on the inside. It was a hit. I poured in one flavor of jello, added some gummies, let it chill. Poured on the second flavor of jello, added gummies, let it chill. Whoa. That is the best cake. Wait, it actually has gummy squish fish and turtles. Wait, where are and turtles? snakes. for joining me. I love having you here. If you want to stick around, click that subscribe button so that you can be a part of the Rouse Rising family. Be sure you give this video a like, that's a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. What do you think of this cake? Are you going to try it out? I hope you enjoyed this recipe and hanging out with us in the kitchen. Until next time, bye!